Chapter 1073, Miss Buckingham Stussy. An Emotionless Excursion, Volume 29. Winner of the Mobile Peace Prize for GP Flowers that bloom out of gunpowder. Vegapunk is just chilling, making very peaceful and beautiful things. And all the other Jerma dudes are like, what are you doing? Brilliant. Sounds like One Piece. Sounds like One Piece. All right. Wait, no, no, no. There's got to be something hidden here, right? 53? I don't think so. I think it's just a silly one. This is the most cursed One Piece face ever drawn. It is a little bit, yeah. I can't really tell, like, what his facial expression is even supposed to be. Like, are, I think his eyes are shut and he's just chilling. But not really. I feel, no, I, don't, I can't tell what's going on there. It's kind of cursed. Uh, Kaku, I can't wrap my head around this. Paper art after image. So when you don't understand something, your first move is to kill it. You're such a wildcat. Sea prism stone. Oh, that's cool. That's really cool. Like, this is one of those things I've been going on about for such a long time, right? If people can get their hands on even the tiniest bit of sea prism, why, they don't, uh, why don't they try to somehow incorporate it in their weapons? And this is exactly that. She just has this little lipstick. Oh, that is so cool. I like that. I'm not stupid enough to fight fair against men as powerful as you two, but you'll forgive me, won't you? Oh, yes. I love myself a fighter who doesn't try to fight fair. I'm not gonna lie. I like drama. And the character is just being like, I'm, I'm obviously not gonna fight both of you fairly, right? I'm just gonna whip out my little secret, secret thing and catch you off guard. It's great. What has me more interested, though, how am I supposed to read this? Because I feel like he's a little bird. What's going on with this bird? All right, let, let's keep reading. Maybe I, then I can figure it out. Because if his bird suddenly flies off, because he's clearly not being attacked, the bird seems fine. And knowing Oda, it's going to be one of those things where the bird flies off and alerts someone. Guaranteed. The bird is just a bird. Yeah, but like if a bird shows up without its owner, that's sort of sus, isn't it? What's going on over there? Why is CP0 fighting CP0? Wait. So we were overthinking it, I guess. So she was really talking to Vegapunk all along. So she was the ally? That's it. That's sort of odd. She's been on our side for two decades of undercover work. You had to spy in the top secret intelligence agency. Not by design, but that's how it ended up. But you have a problem, Doctor. Lucci and I are of the same authority level. I can't override the orders he gave the Seraphim. There's no way to stop them. Yeah, that's sort of odd. Because I thought with how played up it was, and the fact that they were sort of... Because when, when, when would that have even happened? The bird is a drone, just like in real world. Birds don't exist. They're a secret. I probably can't say that, right? Because that's that's going to get like flagged for conspiracies and stuff like that. It, it's There's a glorious story about birds not being real. It's very, very funny. Very funny. Yeah, because when... How could she have... Because, I mean, this is a confirmation that Vegapunk was talking to her like a million percent, right? Okay. Uh, I guess I'm not going to try to overthink it. Because I'm just thinking back. Was there a single point in time where they weren't together, like CP0. Because, I mean, she was clearly talking to someone. And Luchi is a pretty, pretty obsessed dude, right? He wouldn't have just let something like that slip, but I don't know. Oh, here we go. You know what? <laughs> That's exactly what I was thinking, especially one guy in particular. Is this Oda's way of giving us... Okay, I'm going to keep reading. This is 1 million percent going to be exactly what I think it is, and it's going to be great. Uh, damn it, they totally ruined the lab. I guess it should make us uh, easier to get out. Oh, here we go. Of course. Of course. Of course. Of course. Of course. Let's finally put all the discussion to rest. And instead of having, you know, uh, them actually fight, we're going to have the Seraphim version of the uh, of Mihawk. Fight Zoro, clearly. I mean, it's not gonna it's not gonna take long, right? It's gonna be like literally a one slash. Okay. Oh, it's targeting. Okay, that's cool. Uh, now that I get a better look at you, you're actually a little more human than him. <laughs> okay, that's a good line. Is this is this hinting toward my theory that Mihawk is an actual vampire and potentially immortal? Maybe, maybe, maybe. I mean, the fact that a Seraphim is shook by Zoro is kind of cool. I'm not gonna lie, this is really good. Um, Luchi was fighting with Luffy and Kaku was busy, I guess. 
I guess it could have happened during then. I mean, yeah, I feel like that's just a case of me overthinking it, honestly. Uh, I do take the L there. Because they thought it would be something huge again, right? I should have just gone with the Occam's Razor answer. Uh, that's, that's me being silly. Okay, yeah, but the Seraphim actually being shook by Zoro is kind of big. Alright. Um, Seraphim, stop fighting. Okay, so that's the end of that. You, you, you know exactly what Oda was thinking here, right? Dude was like, all of you keep asking me who is stronger, what happened during the time skip, can we finally have Zoro versus Mihawk? I'm gonna give you Zoro versus Mihawk, then he writes this in. She's like, you happy now? Happy now? They, they clashed swords once. For a brief second, and this is a Seraphim, not actually Mihawk, because I seriously, I cannot, I cannot do anything with Mihawk, right? I cannot undermine Mihawk. So I'm gonna give you a copy of Mihawk. <laughs> I mean, I'm not against it. This is gonna be glorious in the anime. This is gonna be awesome. Uh, and the Seraphim of Stop 2. What are these things? Someone explain. And by the way, can we talk about the fact that... I don't think I've talked about this before. Can we talk about the fact that uh, the Seraphim Mihawk sword is identical to the real Mihawk sword. I'm pretty sure when you're cloning people, their accessories and weapons don't come with them. So is this just a case of Vegapunk trying to get a similar sword? Or potentially there might be something more to it. <laughs> Zoro vs Mihawk at home? Exactly. Exactly. S-Snack literally has a bow earring? Well, earrings are one thing you can sort of replicate, right? But wasn't, wasn't Mihawk's sword like legendary? So I don't know. I don't know. Uh, you can still forge swords, but I doubt this is as much strength as the original. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, right? Because I think... Isn't, like, Mihawk's sword, like, ridiculously legendary and super powerful and everything like that? Uh, the fact that someone with the same authority cannot override an order makes no sense, to be honest, because it means the Vegapunk cannot change the order of another Vegapunk, for example. Yeah, it does seem like a bit of a weird, weird thing, right? It's sort of like... If you think about these sorts of people who are super paranoid about remaining in power and wanting to have as much control as they can, it seems like an odd thing to allow, right? So let's say, let's say we develop this weapon, and basically our motivation for developing this weapon is to ensure that nobody can contest with us. But people like that are usually always afraid of their partner as well. But if you cannot override your partner's wish, they can sort of annihilate you. And there's nothing you can do, right? Normally, like the smart way of going about it would be that if you are on the same hierarchy, you can override each other, thereby you sort of have mutual destruction, right? There's nothing you can do. It does seem a bit odd, but I have a feeling that it, mu it must be something that is going to play in a lot more than what we see here. Because in this case, it doesn't really do much. It literally like changes, what, like a few panels of what happens. I feel like that is something that we need to keep in mind. It's only uh, it's only to have a cool clash between Zoro and Eshawk, nothing more. I mean, if it is that, then it still seems very odd, just like in the in the universe itself. Just like again, I would imagine that you would design it to be that you can override each other exactly because of this. I've placed Sea Prism Stone on Luchi and Kaku. Uh, thank you, Stussy. We're going to escape the island. Come with us. Understood. Hey, you just added more to the total. I mean, speaking of Oda being cheeky, everybody was like, are we seriously going to get Yamato as a crewmate? Are we going to get uh, Carrot as a crewmate? Is Momo going to come with us? We didn't get any of them. Literally all of them are somewhere. Either they stayed behind, or they got sent back to Zo, or whatever the case, right? We didn't get anyone. And then Oda was like, oh, you didn't like that? Okay, fine. I'll give you everyone. I'll give you seven Vegapunks. I'll give you five or however many there are Seraphims. I'll give you Stussy. I'll give you Kaku. I'll give you everyone. It's fine. Don't worry about it. The fact that the Seraphim is allowed to attack the lab where they made is insane. I feel like that is more believable, right? I've said this before. I do think... Sorry about that. I just hit the mic. I do think that it's odd that Vegapunk allowed this situation to happen in the first place. Because to me, Vegapunk was always so far ahead of these sorts of things that he would have always had a kill switch. But now that we learn more about him, it just seems like he never thought about those sorts of things, right? He was always thinking about the big, big picture. And it was almost like, okay, if you're going to come after me, oh well, right? From Vegapunk's point of view, and of how much we've heard of him, and with how much he's clearly developed, I mean, the Seraphims, 
by themselves, right? It does seem odd that this situation happened in the first place, but I can almost forgive that. What seems odd is the fact that they can't override each other, and I feel like that's going to be important. I feel like it has to be. Oh, it is perfectly capable of engineering another Zoro and S-Hawk uh, to clash. I mean, of course, it could have happened 15 seconds earlier, right? It could have happened, like, literally right as they arrived. Instead of us cutting to, um, to, like, them fighting Kako and stuff like that, we could have immediately just seen the, uh, one of them rush, uh, rush Zoro or something. I don't know. It seems odd. We'll see what happens. It'll probably happen that all the Straw Hat, uh, all people except the Straw Hats are on the Sunny. Honestly, with how the story is going on right now, I would not be surprised in the least if we do get like another, another Sabaody and we do lose the ship. I would not be surprised at all. I mean, the, the Zoro versus, uh, versus Mihawk clash alone has already made this chapter excellent. So at this point, everything is just the cherry on top. I'm already happy, right? Bonnie, where'd you go? Old man punk? We can't leave on the ship without you. But an incident had occurred. Dr. Vegapunk Stella was nowhere to be found. And the island is still on 100. An incident. Question is, if both Bonnie and Vegapunk are gone. Oh, and the Kuma memory stuff. Okay, this might actually be very bad. Because if we assume that she did learn of everything that was in Kuma's memories, or what is supposedly Kuma's memories, and now Vegapunk is gone, I think it's Caribou doing again. Yeah, Caribou is also here, right? So whatever he's up to, it's probably not good either. And I mean, either that or he's going to pop up in three more arcs. I don't know. Though to be fair, Oda did deliberately bring him along, so it might actually be him. Though at the same time, like Caribou's not a fighter. Like how could he have feasibly done anything to both Vegapunk and Bonnie? This is very, very sus. Especially with all the Kuma stuff going on and with the memories, right? Because I would assume, like, my initial gut reaction was that, like, she saw Kuma's memories, and then sh maybe she's also headed for the red line, or something like that. That was my first, like, sort of instinct, that she learned of whatever Kuma's doing, and maybe of Kuma's sacrifice, and maybe, like, of her mother or something like that, and that she's on her way there. And she basically took Vegapunk as a hostage, or potentially she needs Vegapunk to get there. But now that you bring it up, Karabu is indeed there. I don't, know if, I don't know if his absorption power is that strong. Maybe it is, but I don't know. All right, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Uh, Sphinx, the new world. Hometown of Whitebeard, <laughs> of Whitebeard the pirate. Not to be confused with Whitebeard, not the pirate. Of course, let's not, let's not remember. Uh, not forget, rather. Uh, Whitebeard, not the pirate, is just Santa Claus. Probably. All right. You should have seen it. I was really scared. Not me. I wasn't scared. Brilliant. Uh, the Navy came marching into the town and pushed us around. I'm really sorry to hear about that, kids. That must have been quite a fright. Oh god, we have another- we have another dude that literally looks like the dude who came to Nami's village. This country is unaffiliated with the world government. The law doesn't protect you here. Of course. We know Whitebeard left a vast treasure here. If you don't tell us where it is, that's grounds for execution. Can't find them is when people conveniently forget they can use hockey. You know what's even more convenient? When we forget about Brook's ability that literally lets him face through walls and find anything. Remember how he can face through any wall? And find anything? At all? Anyway. Uh, <laughs> if we shoot you one at a time, will you remember? Or rather, will that help you remember? So this is literally like a dude that came to Nami's village. Brilliant. How sad. How sad. I mean, she's clearly not gonna get shot, right? Oh, hey, okay. They're, they're... <laughs> there it is. Leave my daughter's hometown. There, well, there's Weevil. There's Weevil. That's what he's up to. Okay. I thought they sent battleships after him when the Whirlers were disbanded. We can get in touch with the entire squadron. They're all down. His strength is just that monstrous. Well, I mean, hey. At least he's doing, like, a pretty cool thing now. I guess. I guess he's actually pretty cool now. He's protecting a bunch of kids. And uh, driving away a bunch of evil marines. I guess Weevil's a hero now. I'm all on board the, the Weevil, uh, Weevil train. Weevil's my best friend now. All right. Uh, back to the ship. Wait for reinforcements. This is Sphinx. Former warlord Weevil is here, requesting backup. Uh, if that big guy didn't show up, this village would have been done for. Then he's a hero. I'm glad everyone's all right. 
But it doesn't end there, Marco. What do you think came after that? Admiral Ryu... So who is this Admiral? I don't know their actual names. Oh, so it's, it's, the, it's the nature, dude. He took Weevil away. Get my son back. So wait, hold on. Did he realize he like really messed up in Wano? And now he just went after Weevil just to be like, I did mess up. I got someone. I, I know, I know I went over to, to Wano. I got annihilated and Shanks kind of showed up. I mean, you, you gotta excuse me, right? But hey, I got Weevil. Get my son back. And while you're at it, hand over the estate of Whitebeard Newgate. Former Rocks Pirates self-styled scientist. Well, this is interesting now, isn't it? Self-styled scientist. Oh, it's- oh, that- that's what the backup was? Oh, they sent him as backup. Oh, okay. I- I thought he just showed up, like, by himself. Okay, yeah, that makes much more sense. I thought that the backup was supposed to be just vanilla marines, but I guess, I mean, if he shows up, yeah. Okay, fair enough. Okay, anyway, are you ready for tinfoil? If she is a Mads free- uh, freeloader, or free rider, or whatever, whatever this is supposed to be, and a self-styled scientist. Did she try to somehow clone Whitebeard, but ended up with Weevil? <laughs> Did she try to clone Whitebeard, but Weevil happened? <laughs> I don't know. Seems likely. And the fact that she's like, she has a little bit of that Nami energy, right? Where she's just like, hand over the estate of Whitebeard Newgate. Maybe. Maybe if she was like, you know what? I met Whitebeard once. He's pretty strong. Maybe I can try and clone him. I worked with Mads after all, right? I don't know. I feel like that is likely, but I also don't want to think that, right? Because, I mean, at that point, I feel like I'm calling everyone a clone at that point. Uh, that's pretty much what we're saying. Yeah, I mean, to me, I feel like it makes so much sense. It makes, it makes perfect sense, honestly, with how random Weevil is and how he just pops up randomly. I do very much like that. But again, I feel like we're calling everyone a clone at that point. Uh, she was with him on Roxas' ship. Yeah, 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 I guess, I guess. Yeah, yeah, of course, uh, that's what I'm saying, right? They, she technically could have... To be fair, I feel like this also brings up the question of whether or not we have a messed up rocks running around, if you know what I mean. A messed up rocks. Someone like Blackbeard, potentially. I can imagine her having a crush on him and then asking Vegapunk to give her a son. <laughs> I mean, it could also be something like that. I, I, I'm sort of all aboard the they're a clone train, but at the same time, I want to get off the everyone's a clone train. All right, let's finish off the chapter. Uh, Weevil. Mama. Very sad. Um, sent to the prison for protecting his own father's village. My poor, sweet, brave boy. Uh, I'm really grateful to him for saving the village, I can tell you that much. So yeah, there's only one person who can who can prove it to you, and that is Dr. Vegapunk. Yeah, that's that's an interesting one. How this whole thing is gonna play out. I would not be surprised at all if it, if it is really something like she wanted to have a son, and Vegapunk just basically gave her one of his experiments. Yeah, I, I kind of feel like it could also be that, right? Where Oda is deliberately baiting us into thinking that he is a clone, right? With all the clone stuff going on. But then we find out, no. Like, he legit is, he legitimately is, like, their son, right? And it's just as simple as that. At this point, I've said it ever since post-Wano started. I have no idea what Oda is doing. And I'm just, I'm, I'm here along for the ride. Ah, Kizuru. Here's something to eat with the tea. I trust you had this tested for poison per Okay. Okay. Am I already wrapping up more tinfoil? Or is this just supposed to be flavor text? Because the fact that they suddenly mention... I mean, it makes perfect sense. Okay, let's, let's finish this. Um, I'll take it to him. You may go now. Yes, sir. Uh, just out of curiosity, have you ever met Dr. Vegapunk before? I have. Just once, a long time ago. But I must say that I find this turn of events to be most regrettable. Five elders, highest authority in the world, Saint J. Garcia. Saturn. Well then. 
Okay. Wait, 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 wait. So Pluton. Pluton is in Wano. And it's somewhere underground. Okay. Then we have Neptune, which is Poseidon, right? So that's that's that one. Then we have Uranus, which we still don't know what it technically is. And then next up is Saturn. So is it safe to assume that all the other all the other planets coming in? I'm calling I'm calling Pluton a, a planet, by the way. Uh, I'm sorry. It's evil not to. It doesn't matter that it's too small. It's cool, okay? But because I mean, if we go with the themes, right? If it's underground, and it's like the underworld, okay. Then we have, then we have Shirohoshi. That makes perfect sense. Then if Uranus is like the sky, then it, maybe we've seen it. Maybe that was Uranus. Okay. And isn't Saturn? Hold on, I don't want to sound like a like a doofus. Isn't Saturn like? I'm pretty sure it's time. Saturn is a god of time. Are we are are we getting the world? Are we getting the world? Okay, let's count it down. I'm gonna bring up. We're gonna bring up. Uh It's time. It's time for tinfoil. It's time for full on tinfoil. Let's go. Uh, let's go. So we have Jupiter. What was Jupiter? I don't remember what was Jupiter. Jupiter is Zeus, right? Jupiter. Zeus. Did I get that right? Yes. Yes. So, okay. Then Mars is... Mars is war, right? Hmm. Hmm. The Earth... And the Moon... And the Sun... Okay, so that's... This is one, two, three. Okay, so those are the ancient weapons. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so if all the if the five elders is Saturn, Jupiter, Mars, Venus, and Mercury, Luffy is the sun, the moon is Blackbeard, and the Earth is Emu. Oh, hold on. Let me let me catch up on everything. My my, my head is spinning a little bit. I mean Saturn. I mean this is this is like huge, right? This is why I saw all the black boxes. The fact that we've basically confirmed that the whole planet naming scheme. I saw a lot of people joking that the next elder is Bruno Mars. I love that. I love that. That is so good. That is so good. I mean, yeah, <laughs> they're supposed to act all together, but the the the, the question of wait, they act at all. That's that's another very good one. It's very witty. It's a very witty. Uh, Pluton isn't a planet. Pluton is the only one who is not a person, lol. I feel like at the time when when Oda wrote stuff about Pluton, Pluton was still a planet. I feel like that's that's the explanation there. I don't remember when Pluton was classified like as loses planet status. When did that happen? Because I remember that happening. It was like relatively 2006. So Uranus, Poseidon, Pluton are the outer planets, the left, uh, Mercury. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's five. And then if Earth, if Earth is Emu, and then the Moon is obviously Blackbeard, and then the Sun is obviously Luffy? Venus is a girl? I feel like that doesn't matter at all. Remember that Emu is Umi equals C backwards? Eh? Eh? Uh, I wonder how their soul system works. I still remember that weird thing in it. Uh, yes! Good point. Let's bring that up. Let's bring that up. One Piece Ohara uh, solar system. That is a very, very good point. Because the world of One Piece has, like, multiple moons, right? One thing I don't want to discount right away is, like, we know that the three ancient weapons are all based around, uh, like, the, like, the planet names, right? But now... What if the whole three ancient weapon thing isn't even fully true? Because, I mean, if they have shaped history... They could have easily hidden the fact that there are potentially more of them, and potentially one of these dudes might be an ancient weapon. And another thing, one of my long-running assumptions was that somebody involved here would be immortal. I thought that either one of the one of the elders or potentially Emu might be immortal, but like judging by what he says here, uh, just out of curiosity, have you ever met Doctor Vegapunk before? I have, just a long time ago. I feel like for someone immortal, saying that doesn't seem likely. That might- that might just be me reading into it a little too much. I feel like saying, we met a long time ago, 
when you've been around for 900 years, and realistically, Vegapunk, at least judging by what we know, I think Vegapunk is a normal human. Like, he's, he, there's not, not some weird shenanigans to him. So, it seems odd. And the fact that now his scar suddenly carries something, something far, far more again. And the fact that he's on the move at all, oh boy, Oda is really cooking. Oh yeah, yeah, of course. I, th I think the whole planet naming thing is isn't anything to do with uh, within universe. I think clearly Oda is going by like real uh, real world patterns, right? Uh, I don't think. I was just wondering, like, potentially if the world of One Piece has multiple moons, maybe that could play into the whole when somebody is supposed to signify the moon in the real world because One Piece has this one ab abnormality where it sort of mirrors the real world, but not really. Uh, maybe that could change something up, but I don't think so. Yeah, I yeah, am. Yeah. I think we're just supposed to go off of uh, the actual planets. What I now wonder is like if he is Saturn and Saturn is the god of time, is this dude literally going to whip out the world real quick? Or is it supposed to be more... Because I mean, again, these guys consider themselves to be like the highest authority in the entire world, right? This dude could have literally named himself Saturn. Like, it, it, it might not be his name. The dude just might have been sitting there well, they clearly are not doing much, right? So they have pl plenty of time to think about things. So maybe he was just sitting there one day, you know what? Um, I'm going to be Saturn now. And the rest of them were like, yeah, you know what? I'm going to be Mars. So I don't know if it's like an actual, like an actual name or it's just a title they came up with. I, I would like to assume that it's an actual name and that it has significance. But who knows? Who knows? Uh, if anyone is immortal, it surely isn't one of the five elders. Why would immortal kneel to him uh, in reverie? Uh, I feel like if they, if, like, just to play devil's advocate, right? I'm saying, I'm not saying I think they're immortal, just to play devil's advocate a little bit. I think there might be a case of them wanting to create this eternal government, right? So, uh, this idea exists in the series foundation, if you look at that. So, the whole concept there is they clone the same. I don't know if this is, this is not really spoilers. It's so broad that it's not really spoiling anything. Um, the whole idea there is to clone the same person over and over and over again because they share the same exact mindset, uh, and they will remain in power because they d they like have no motivation to change anything, right? So their primary motivation is to stay in power. So if they were to assemble this this sort of council of five elders and they were immortal, it would be in their best interest to keep the five elders around and for them to be the same exact people, right? Because if they convince them once, they can convince them forever, basically. That would be my rationale for potentially all of them being immortal. But I do think that might be a stretch. But I don't know. There could also be the case that the fact that there are only five elders, right? Or something like that. Like, entertain this idea. Uh, the fact that there are only five elders now is because they are the only five living ones that were from the 20 kingdoms, right? So potentially all of them were granted immortality and they turned on everyone else, right? So the rest of them were wiped out and it's only these dudes that survived, whatever the Game of Thrones was. I don't know. It's This is, this is a really, really interesting reveal, though. Uh, and the whole Saturn thing. Oh, that's so good. I love that. My brain is in, in scrambles a little bit because I'm just thinking about the whole moon thing. I'm thinking back to how Blackbeard never sleeps. And I'm thinking how he responds to the moon. And potentially he has the darkness fruit. And when is it dark? At the nighttime. And potentially maybe his fruit gets even more powerful during nighttime. And we've never seen him fight at nighttime as far as I know anyway. So potentially there's also some sort of awakening to happen there. And maybe he is actually Zhao and he can make the moon disappear or something ridiculous like that. I'm just thinking about all of these possibilities that have suddenly opened up. This is cool. I like this. I like this. All right, let me let me double check if I've. But clearly they're on their way to Egghead, right? And they're going to override their orders once again, which is not good. Yeah, basically what I'm saying here is I feel like what we're seeing right now, one of these plot threads that is going right now is going to basically start off everything. And at this point, I really couldn't tell you which one. I don't know. I need to think about this. I need to think about this. I need to absorb this. I feel like there's a good theory here, though. I feel like there's a good theory here, though. I hope this also isn't one of those things that is lost in translation or something like that. Because with all these big reveals, like when we have like Saturn and Jay Garcia, there's a lot of these things which I feel like could be lost in translation somewhere along the way. Uh, so I don't know. I don't know. 
Well, let me Google one thing and then I'm going to give it give the proper chapter rating. Pluton is indeed the god of the underworld. I thought so, yes. Because that then ties in with the whole Davies Locker thing, right? And the fact that the fact that Brooke's ability literally pulls things from the underworld and the fact that his soul came from the underworld and then how does that play into this whole thing? I don't know. I don't know. Could it potentially be that Pluton is some sort of weird power that can raise the dead? Or something ridiculous like that? It wouldn't really make sense though. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, I'm gonna give the chapter rating. Uh, I'm going to, once again, give the 1 million percent unbiased response. Because clearly we are all rational beings here. We do not get caught up in emotions and hype. Uh, all of my ratings are 1 million percent consistent. If you graph them, they are 1 million percent indicative of the quality of the chapter. This has been proven scientifically. There are multiple studies. It is peer reviewed. Trust me. That said, this chapter is ridiculous. The fact that I, I, I already forgot that Zoro clashed with Mihawk says enough. So this chapter, as I think every single Egghead chapter has received, gets a very, 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 very respectable 9.65 out of 10. Weevil is my best friend now. Zoro versus Mihawk when? And no, this is not Mihawk. Saturn, please don't have the world. And Star Platinum, come save us. That's the review. Ship it. Can, can we also talk about the fact that Oda just literally started even more plot threads, like at the same time? The fact that, once again, your typical Oda thing happens, there's been an incident. Dr. Vegapunk has gone missing. Great. You know what this also means? We're probably not getting Devil Fruit lore. Probably not getting any. That's unfortunate. I don't know. Let's not get into that. Let's not get into that. Uh, thank you very much for joining me. And I will see you whenever I see you. There's a lot of stuff coming. Uh, and it's, it's, it's gonna be fun. Probably. Probably. Anyway, have a wonderful start of your week. And uh, I'll see you sometime. Bye-bye.